Yeah, hello and welcome to this video, which is not a Blitz video, but something else. Yeah, I'm going to show you um, an easy to learn way to play against the London system, uh, the ever popular queen pawn opening with d4 and bishop f4. Um, this is not um, a completely universal system that you can play with every move order and whatever white does, you can do the same thing, but you can address one particular move order that is very popular with, I think, an easy to learn system that gives black fair chances. Um, I'm going to present you uh, this uh, system by going through two of my over the board classical time control games that I played in recent months. The first game and the two games, they are not that long, so it's not going to be a super uh, long video. Um, let's look at the, the first game. That was played um, in an open tournament that I played in uh, early September 2018 in Ortenburg in Bavaria. It's a nice little tournament, five rounds, a weekend tournament. Um, I've played there for the second time and I will play there again this year. This game was played in the final round. Um, I had the black pieces um, against Martin Garnich. Um, my opponent is rated, I think, roughly 2,150, something like that. I don't have it. Um, I don't have that written down at the time of the tournament, but something like that. Um, I needed to win the game. It was the final round, and I didn't have such a good event. So I was looking for a quick way. Um, I needed to prepare, what I was trying to say, um, with little time on my hand. And I saw that my opponent basically every time plays d4, bishop f4. So I played this, bishop f4, and then I went d5, which um, makes this a valid system from two move orders, d4, knight f6, bishop f4, d5, or d4, d5, bishop f4, knight f6. The second game that I'm going to show you, I actually played d5 on the first move and then knight f6. Um, now white played e3, and the system that I'm suggest suggesting to play um, is only possible against this particular move order. It is a different kind of animal if white plays knight f3. That is simply um, a different um, a different move order that does not allow this particular idea that I'm going to show. The idea is, I mean, okay, you have other options here, yeah, like c5 in particular is mostly played. But what is the idea against this? My suggestion is to play bishop g4. This move I only found briefly, um, yeah, just very briefly before the game, like 20 minutes before. And um, I found some games in the database by some good players, and I was surprised that this move is virtually unknown, but actually quite good. So what's the point? Of course, we are attacking the queen, and white uh, needs to react directly, he cannot do whatever, he has to do something. And this uh, limits the choices quite nicely, which is, I think, quite good if you want um, some sort of a surprise weapon or something that um, it's not going to be a huge chunk of theory to learn. It's not bad if they don't have that many options. So um, the critical move, in a way, should be f3, Yeah, trying to make use of this bishop move that moves basically into thin air. It's, it's not pinning anything. And f3 is the move that was played in both of the games that I'm going to show. Um, the alternatives are... Um, in a way less critical, but maybe even like objectively better. We will see. So what else is there? White could play bishop e2. That is a normal looking move, of course. But here, after bishop takes e2, I think black is already, I can be quite happy. If white recaptures with the queen, we have more than one decent option. The only question that um, we have to answer for ourselves is do we want to play very conservatively, like with c6 and then e6 and so on, or can we do even more? Um, I think even e6 is a decent move because the check doesn't really hurt us all that much. 
this is something that is interesting to analyze yeah, because you can play this and get this back. You have a fair amount of compensation here. Even this is a possibility, but um, the very uh, simple move c6 is going to be perfectly fine as well. If you build up with black um, this kind of triangle with e6 to come, if you build this up with black and you have the bishop traded on c8, yeah, you're usually okay. It's just um, not a position where white has many active things available. Um, so bishop e2 feels uncritical. Knight f3 um, is basically a self-pin and um, it does not feel very dangerous either. Here, black again has a choice between c6 base setups or playing e6. I think there is really no need for c6 here. I would go e6 and um, I don't really see a huge problem here for black. The next move can be bishop b6 and we have, I think, already comfortably equalized. Um, in some way, f3 is the only way to, to tackle bishop g4 with ambition. So white played f3. It is the most interesting move and um, you have to see, when, okay, I was the huge favorite in this game, but um, my opponent also, in order to win some sort of prize money, should probably try to win. And f3, it, it is the most um, ambitious move. So black simply drops back to d7. It is, this is not the most obvious square. d7 is very rarely a good square for a bishop, but in this particular case, there's simply no other square. You don't want to go all the way back to c8, that's a little bit too much. And the other squares don't look good. You know, something like this is going to be answered by g4 probably. We will see that after bishop d7, the move g4 is in fact quite interesting. I am not sure if it is a good move, objectively speaking, but it is something that would definitely test our course a little bit more than uh, small, um, yeah, slower, slower approaches. G4 gains a lot of space on the king side, and it prevents knight h5, which can be an annoying move. Um, here, black will probably play e6 and c5, and initiate a bit of counterplay against the center. One interesting point that is um, um, yeah, quite often seen in many lines here, is that after c5 and queen to b6, there is sometimes bishop to b5, which all of a sudden makes sense of the slightly awkward bishop position. Um, a position like that here definitely is going to be very sharp. Black hand plays c5 and so on, and white has this big expansion on the king side, but this is also weakening. I think if you want to um, get an interesting position uh, with black against the London, this is a good bet. So I'm happy with this position. Um, it is difficult to really um, yeah, make a clear verdict about the objective evaluation. Engines tend to favor black here. I guess the long-term weaknesses here are um, something that the engine does not like. I mean, you can really ask yourself, where is the king going to go, the white king? Um, it's not so easy to castle um, queenside. Yeah? If black is coming with c5 and so on, this is actually quite quick. So g4 is ambitious. Um, the move c4 is also interesting, but I don't think all that great because Black has an immediate counterplay with c5. If the center opens up, this weird um, configuration here will become a problem. This is very evident um, if we look at the move c5, which is okay. It's very bad, but here we see the problem. Yeah, if there, if the pawn would be still back on f2. White, okay, has bishop g3 at least. And here you don't have a good move at all. You cannot really move this anywhere. And everything here is under, under big pressure. Um, okay, c, c takes d5 is, is a very silly move. But in general, I think I'm quite happy here. If the center opens up, then f, um, f3, e3 is a problem. For example, if after taking e6 and a line like this, Black is definitely happy. Yeah, I'm getting this back, and then I'm playing a position where the move f3 is completely useless. It just gives white some weaknesses, and there is no real benefit. Um, an interesting approach, I think, on move five is knight c3, 
trying to um, be quick with uh, queenside castling. After e6, black again intends c5, white could go e4, which leads to sharp play after taking and bishop b4. There is quite a bit of pressure on white center and the bishop in some cases can go to c6, again making some sense of this somewhat weird, weirdly placed piece. This is all pretty much uncharted water, so it's, um, it's interesting also to analyze. I don't want to analyze every single line here. This is very difficult because there is, um, there's not much games that you can rely on. And um, I mean, just um, exploring it a little bit for yourself is, um, is a good thing to do. Let's look at some more motifs that will also help um, quite a bit. Um, Knight d2 was played in, in my game here by, by Garnage. I went c5. And he played c3. As usually happens in the London, and they play c3. You have to, however, always check what happens if white does capture. This is an important uh, thing to check. If um, you just lose the pawn, it's no good. However, an important point is after knight c6 that there is simply not a knight on f3. With a knight on f3 instead, then there would be control over e5, but white has no control. And I will play the e pawn, possibly even to e5, and then take on c5 with a nice position. So it's understandable that white went c3. I played knight to c6, and now white played bishop to d3. That makes um, quite some sense. It's the, the square to go to, where would you uh, develop the bishop to otherwise? You can make an argument in favor of g4. This is what the engine is also pointing out and this is a very similar position to one to one that we saw before where g4 is played on move 5 already. Um, here it's interesting to consider how black should play. You can definitely play with e6 but an idea that I like is g6. The idea would be on very long term to play bishop g7 and prepare e5. If you can play e5 it would be excellent of course. This position here is very unclear. White can push h4, for example, and black will probably go h6. Not, not a necessity, but it's kind of normal to react like that. And that is just very complicated. Yeah, um, Tough, tough to evaluate. But I think it's a good position against many uh, London system players because it is so um, unusual, simply. Yeah, oftentimes Players who employ the London, they have their d4, c3, e3 setup worked out, and this is not a conventional position. Um, the slight issue with bishop d3, or what that was played by my opponent, is the idea to play knight h5. This, that's what I did. Note, only possible because the knight uh, is now safe on h5. Pawn is on f3. Okay, he wants to keep the bishop, goes to g5. Played h6, bishop back, and here um, there are a couple of options, and it is possible that I did not play in the best possible way. It's absolutely possible. I played queen to b6. That's not a bad move, but there are other interesting choices here as well. Um, one is to take on d4. The idea is that after the recapture, and it's both um, recaptures are met with the same idea is to play this f4 all of a sudden um, is available bishop f1 has to be played and now very powerful g5 and e5 or bishop g3 e5 it's the same idea this is a very aggressive um, approach and probably a very good one i think that after c takes d4, white should probably take with the c pawn. But that is also not something that is very scary. Black has g5, that can lead to very interesting complications, or again, queen to b6. g5 is interesting, in particular because of the reply um, bishop f2, e5, and now f4. This leads to very complicated play. Now black um, could play e4 with an interesting position or a very funny line, knight takes f4, pawn takes and e4. Now if white preserves the bishop, which probably will happen, you can 
get this. And all of a sudden we have a position where black has two pawns for a piece, but a very strong imposing pawn center on f4 and d4. It's a very complicated uh, position. So taking on d4 and queen b6 was a decent alternative. But my move, my move is not bad, it's just like c takes was um, a very good um, way of playing as well. Queen b6, it's important to see that uh, now the move queen to b3 um, is not that great actually. I can take, knight takes obviously fails, so the pawn has to take, and now taking on d4 is very annoying for white. Um, something like this is not very much fun. And here again, knight f4 is going to be an annoyance. Yeah, something like that is not much fun again. Black is very active and um, yeah, and quite quite in good shape. Queen b3 is not a move that um, scared me all that much. The move that is probably most interesting here is white taking. That leads to um, quite um, quite sharp uh, complications. I can simply take on c5, of course, if um, I want, and then bishop f2, and all of a sudden e4 becomes an option. This is definitely okay for black. I can just move the queen away, let's say here, and I'm okay. Um, the more interesting way is to take on b2, and basically claim that um, that is um, the destruction of white's pawn structure, and therefore should be heavily considered. I think um, that is probably what I would have done. I, ca I cannot tell for absolute sure because it's been a while, yeah? Um, yeah, knight e2 probably, and now queen a3 trying to take this. White has a bit of development though. That's something that you absolutely need to um, admit here with black. And that means you have to be a little bit cautious, yeah, with uh, many queen moves. That would have been very unclear. He played knight e2, basically offering the b2 pawn at this moment. However, taking it is not um, yeah, so advisable. I played e5. Uh, we, can, we can check briefly what would have happened if I would have taken the pawn. For example, after c4, bishop c2, queen b2, there is rook b1. And something like this. This is very similar to the game, actually. Here, however, white has some play with the idea to play e4. Like, for example, I go e6 and he goes e4. This is not easy. It's not easy to play. We'll see the difference to the game where white had no counter play. I decided not to take anything but just play e5. This is part of of the agenda anyway. I grab the center. Yeah? It's better, more active than grabbing a pawn. So he played bishop f2 and now I'm probably not playing in the best possible way. It seems best for, to simply complete development with a move like bishop e2. This is not um, the only move. You can also play like queen c7 or something, but just like keep the tension. I made a calculation mistake here. I played e takes d4. That is not yet a mistake. Um, yeah, in some way it is, because after this I played this with the intention to play c4 and this is not, not that great actually. I think it would have been a lot better, as mentioned, to keep the tension in this position. The issue was, after c4, that I only um, considered the bishop move that he actually played. I thought I would be in very good shape here. And I was in the game because he played this, yeah. And then I grabbed on b2, and had a quite quite large advantage. The problem was he was able to take on c4, and this is a move that I did not evaluate correctly. It is not that I'm worse, but I'm not better anymore. Takes I basically have to take, yeah. And then d5, and all of a sudden. This is um, getting active. Now after queen b2, d takes c6. You can also analyze rook b1. There are some more complications there, but he will have to take this back. 
and you probably get this position. And this is not clear at all. I mean, I've got the bishop pair, but white's development is good. Knight on h5 is very offside. Um, a move like knight d6, for example, is probably giving white um, an equal game. Very much um, likely, at least. And um, I think if I'm not going for this and rather here keep the tension, I, sh I should be a little bit better. Um, he played bishop c2 though, and this is now a problem. I can just grab this, and I did. Um, yeah, rook b1, queen a2, we have to take everything here. And now um, white still can put up a good fight if he would have played rook a1. I'm not convinced that this is enough uh, compensation, but it's better than rook takes b7. He took on b7. And this is what the engine suggests. And now the move knight f1. This is a move that probably a human player wouldn't even consider. But the engine points out that with knight e3, and if this knight should move, which is quite likely, back to f6, then knight f4, there is some pressure against d5. This is not super clear. Yeah, If you return to b6, knight e3, for example, yeah, and then if you play knight f6, there's bishop h4. And uh, kind of, it's not also all that clear. Yeah, I can play knight e7, but that is also not the most natural move. Probably black is fine. The engine thinks black is better, but this is, compared to the game, probably the better chance. It's two pawns. In the game, it was, he was just one pawn down, but he had absolutely no play. Like he took here, I went back to a6, queen b1, and now bishop d6. And the problem is, I'm just threatening um, knight d8, like happened here. And now the rook has to go back. There is just nothing active possible. I was actually expecting him to maybe uh, give the exchange, but this is also ultimately not leading to anything. He went to b2, and now I can simply castle. And I'm a pawn up, it's the a pawn, outside passer, and which is... Um, almost more important, all these pieces are absolutely bad. They don't attack anything and uh, there's no counterplay. He played bishop f5, queen c8 for trades, and here we are already in a, in a technical phase. Yeah? a5, the pawn is too strong. Getting this back into play. And now, yeah, not difficult, but in a nice little shot, bishop b4 leaves this rook stranded. And if he moves it to b6, then I take on c3. He took on b4, and um, yeah, I don't have to say much about this. It ended with this, uh, with this move, giving the queen to get it back with interest. So um, we see that this line irritated my opponent quite a bit. And this is not um, the only game that I had with the line. As mentioned, there is a second game. I'm going to switch to that. And we have the same position after four moves. As mentioned, it happened via d4, d5 this time. So um, my opponent is uh, Thomas Thiel. It's a freedom master. He's rated 2,270 or 80 give or take a couple of points. Um, and he also had um, not really ever looked at bishop g4, as he told me. He, he said he was aware of the move, but had no real preparation or anything. And he didn't know the first game that was played in a small tournament that is not in a database. Okay, he played bishop g3 in this particular position. He was um, concerned about the move knight h5 and therefore retreated. Yeah, there's um, some logic to that, definitely. So I went c5 again, he went c3, and I played knight c6, basically in the same way as I played in the game against Martin Garnich, the game before. And um, it's interesting that the engine, Stockfish, already recommends um, more drastic measures, h5 in particular. I briefly thought about this, I have to say, but I'm just too much of a classical player to to come up with this. It is not a bad idea. When, when If you look at this, it makes perfect sense. h4, 
is some kind of a threat pushing the bishop back gaining space it's definitely a move it's just very it's just aggressive and i'm more of a let's develop pieces kind of person but um i'm sorry um but it was a good a good option h5 also g6 immediately was a good move um the reason why you can maybe question knight c6 slightly is that now with dc5 white could have uh, taken this pawn i don't think it is that great but um, it's something that you don't necessarily want to play sometimes yeah because you're not going to get it back easily yeah i i was in the game i was basically thinking okay he's not going to do that with this kind of weird formation with the e3 pawn weak but it is not completely clear for example after e6 b4 a5 the engine suggests queen d2 which is um, now possible com in contrast to other cases of those pawn grabs because knight e4 is prevented um, the engine actually gives black an advantage here and i i do i, I do understand why i mean white's whole piece development and coordination is kind of off and it is just a pawn yeah it's not uh, the end of the world still this is a bit it's, it's murky it's a difficult to play position i wanted to point out that an idea that i also had during the game uh, is the move b6 in this position because after taking queen b6 black is definitely enjoying very nice compensation yeah you look at this and this you have e5 ready oh just e5 and you're definitely fine the problem or the test let's say uh, is bishop a6 threatening to win the exchange and in fact um, this is not a ter terrible line this exchange stack here black has some compensation for the exchange the engine is um, giving white just a very um, minuscule advantage and it's a full exchange here um, the bishop pair it will be very nice and the play on the dark squares will be very nice note that this would be almost for sure incorrect if the sorry <laughs> if the pawn is back on f2 and there is no weakness here and the whole dark square complex so some interesting complications um, a move that is also playable after the capture is of course a5 simply stopping b4 I, I wasn't really sure what to do actually it was kind of a it was a bit of a semi bluff I, I don't i simply thought okay he will not take and if he does i have chances i definitely have some but i didn't have a clear idea what to do he played knight d2 and here um there are a couple of interesting options i, I reasonably quickly played g6 because um i was influenced by some some analysis that I did um, on something entirely different, <laughs> um, where after the, the f pawn move was provoked, the fianchetto was strong because you prepare e5 and sometimes you can go to h6. Um, it's, it's okay, you can play g6, but other moves were good as well. Queen b6, for example, also made quite a bit of sense. One idea worth noting is this one, which again shows that e3 is vulnerable. So there were a couple of options. G6 is not bad though. Um, an interesting idea now for white would have been again to take. That gains a bit more interest here because I have played G6 and the natural recapture on C5 is a bit less attractive. I can however play something like Bishop H6 and this leads to a pretty crazy complication. Something like this is given by Stockfish and uh, yeah, I don't dare any assessment, it's just wild. He played bishop d3 though, and now I played um, knight to h5. You can argue that maybe taking on d4 first was better. It's definitely um, something that I should have considered a bit more. I played this uh, a little bit too quickly. After the capture, the idea is that here, knight h5 or bishop h6, um, is um, a little bit less of counterplay for white. Uh, you see, there was one option in the game that I will show. Um, the option was that, um, yeah, white could play f4 in this position. 
Again, this is not um, super terrible or so for me. I played Knight H5 immediately. Um, but um, that was maybe better than the game. Um, it's tough to say what I should play now. Probably just Queen to B6. The thing is that this is not all that clear. Yes, this, this is a bit weak, but it's still a fairly uh, sturdy structure. I think f4 uh, was something that he should have considered in this position. Another move that was possible was to take on c5, but then I take and play e6. The reason why I'm showing this line is mostly because of an important motif. If he tries to do this, it is simply possible to play b6 and make a full gambit out of this. In such a position here, black has really excellent compensation. You have the pair of bishops, this bishop will be very strong here, and there are tons of weaknesses on dark squares, and we have a bishop to exploit that. Just wanted to show this pawn sacrifice. It's a fairly standard way of sacrificing a pawn. Um, in the game, after knight h5, he played knight e2. And after that, I was reasonably sure that I should have a fairly large advantage. I took and played e5. Again, it was possible and maybe more precise to take on d4 first. Um, after e5, he now um, missed an opportunity. Not something where he's better or anything, but I think um, putting up a better fight. Probably best is to take on c5 here and play e4. Trying to make some sort of statement in the center and trying to exploit the fact that the development, white's development, is not, not that bad. Here, um, I, I expected this to happen, um, and I wasn't entirely sure what to do. I saw that this is probably a little bit better for black. I mean, we preserved the bishop pair, and on a very good day, we manage f5. But things are not all that clear. You can play queen b3 or bishop c4 here, for example. Or after e4 to play d4. I think I would have rather taken on e4 because I wanted to open the position for the bishops. But this is not a bad choice either. Probably something like that will happen. And here black is also, I guess, quite happy. But it was better, I think, than the game. After pawn takes e5, knight takes, this position uh, makes a really bad impression. Uh, the e3 pawn is on a half open file now. Interestingly here, uh, I took a bit of time until I played queen to b6. Queen to b6 is a fairly, it's a typical candidate move. Yeah, looking at this, looking at this on e3. Um, the thing is, the move bishop g7 looks more natural. During the game, however, I was unsure how to handle knight, takes, uh, knight to b3. Now the queen is attacking the pawn and the knight is attacking the pawn. And um, I'm not really able to save both. The engine, however, points out that I can simply play like that and have a great position. This is, once you see it, afterwards fairly obvious. Yeah, you have queen to e7 coming, you have knight c4, it's, it's pretty bad. During the game, eh, I didn't want to sacrifice anything and I didn't see this, this line all that uh, clearly. So I went queen to b6. He played knight f4, which is a good move, bishop c6. And now I think um, the final opportunity to keep the game going was e4. That was, that was the move that I expected. Um, the point is that now if I take, knight takes, this is actually not too bad. There is this and this now in the position. So I should not take this, but rather castle queenside. And this is what I planned in the game. I saw this position and looked a little bit, and I felt I still should be better because bishop g7, rook h to d8 is on the cards, and he still has some problems there. Yeah? I mean, this is, this is just hanging. And it's not so easy to ignore. Still, that is what he should have done. He played knight b3, and now I castled queenside and put my knight onto c4. This is now really unbearable. Right? The pressure is too high. He played rook b1 to cover b2. And in this position, I calculated knight takes e3, but 
I wasn't completely sure if I'm winning there and it is winning yeah? the engine quickly confirms that yeah that this is a winning attack but during the game honestly I saw that bishop g7 is also very strong the only thing that I need to do is to play d4 like completely detonate the center and then white's king position will be telling yeah the whole problem that he has is he has no dark squared bishop and the all these squares and pawns are weak so bishop g7 is a bit of a lazy lazy move compared to knight e3 but it does win he has simply no way of preventing this breakthrough yeah now after d4 um yeah white is completely lost and threatening far too much he played the move e4 and now a couple of continuations win um what i played is enough knight takes b2 simply taking this pawn after rook takes i grab here attacking the queen and attacking the rook which will win huge chunks of material so after knight b2 he had to move the queen and now i simply took and here he resigned the game also being in quite severe time trouble um is also lost him regardless of the time i'm pawns up and threatening c4 check and it's um it's a complete disaster so we see that this line with bishop g4 is not bad really um the let's say sane choices bishop e2 knight f3 are not very scary and don't require much of a theoretical uh, workload to master and f3 leads to somewhat murky unclear play so if you um, are looking for a quick easy weapon against the london this could be one for you take note that again we are talking about this particular move order there's always yeah people tr starting with this and go here or they can also after bishop f4 play this and then you have a different line this is not a problem it's just like it's not a universal weapon that will work every time most of the time however this is the way they play because this gives white some more flexibility in regards to certain lines after black plays something else than bishop g4 this is why this move order is often recommended in in books and um, and other uh, content that is released videos and so on um i don't have the current uh, theory on the Lon london system on the white side there are some things that have been released dvds and so on if you own some of those i would be very interested to learn what um, those dvds recommend or, or dvds books whatever you have what they recommend against bishop g4 in some cases i can imagine they don't even cover the move all right i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching